Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Locker Room. This is Southland's podcast for men. What we try to do is talk about the right things in the right way and redeem men's conversations. We're in a season right now where we are responding to questions that have been asked by men. So they've submitted their questions. That's uh, You can do that right now at lockerroompodcast.com. Go submit your question. If we choose one of your questions, we'll send you something. I don't know what we're sending people. <laughs> T-shirt, sweatshirt, something. A signed picture of John Weiss. That's, yeah, that's what everybody's <laughs> wanting. I'm just forced in your name. <laughs> please, please don't. Let me let me buy people something. So, John, this will come as a huge shock to you. So in sub- asking men, soliciting questions for men, this will be the third episode, and there have been uh, two things that we've talked about, uh, sex <laughs> and hobbies. <laughs> and so we're going to continue Shocker. the conversation about sex today. Damn. Big Big surprise, men have lots of questions about those things. It's a great topic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to dive in today um, with this question that was submitted. How do you balance having a healthy sex relationship in a Christian marriage, especially when there are differing levels of desire, expectations surrounding it between the husband and the wife? And I'll, I'll read some couple verses here, and then love to hear your thoughts, John. So 1 Corinthians 7, uh, this is a passage that probably every married man highlights. <laughs> <laughs> the husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time, that you may devote yourself to prayer, but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So initial thoughts there. Yeah, I think for every married couple, uh, it's going to depend on the personality of the people involved, but obviously you have a man and a woman, so there are natural desires that don't change couple to couple. And I think couples have to be honest about expectations. And um, what I tend to see in terms of disagreement, usually has to do with a, a specific season of life. Mm-hmm. So, you know, young kids or, you know, there's some physiological issue with one mm-hmm. of the people involved and it's either painful or they can't perform. And so one mm-hmm. of them is is not being satisfied. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's a level of compassion and sensitivity that just has to be brought into those specific conversations. But for the average couple, couple, I always say approach it with honesty. Mm-hmm. You know, talk about it because what you don't want for a man is if he's not being satisfied by his wife for him to begin to struggle with lust or mm-hmm. begin to look at pornography as a means for getting what he should be getting from his spouse. Mm-hmm. So I think those conversations have to be honest. Yeah, and I mean, Paul seems to be giving us that level of honesty when he ends that by you know saying, come back together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So yeah. he's being pretty practical there, everyone. There's a real issue here of if there's not a regular rhythm to sexual intercourse between a husband and a wife, that's going to be an opportunity for Satan. Yeah, I think it's also important for a man to approach his wife. To me, one of the ways to get at maybe why she's not engaged mm-hmm. is to say, is there something I'm not doing or is there something I should be doing that would help? Because I think for a lot of women, it, there's an emotional disconnect between the guy. Where for us, it's, it's most of the time just a physical thing right. for us. But for a woman... You know, if she's not having her needs met emotionally or you're not serving her the way she needs to be served, there's probably some underlying issue that if, again, if you address it and you don't react, I think that's the other temptation mm-hmm. is guys get so frustrated that they become mean or angry yeah. when their wife probably gives them a valid reason. Yeah. Um, but I think the wife has to you know, at least hear the husband out on that too. And unmet expectations often lead to bitterness, especially if those expectations aren't even voiced. And that happens a lot. That's, man, most of the couples I see, the first time they're talking about it is when they're sitting down in my office. Right. I'm like, so you guys have not had this conversation yet. No. <laughs> and it, I think it, it's because Satan gets them to believe that it's a selfish request. Mm-hmm. Man, there's nothing selfish about it. You're designed for this. Right. And once you have sex, especially in a married context, you're going to need it. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you just are. There's a there's a lot of psychology behind that. Yeah, and I think it's important 
for both the man and the woman to understand there's different kinds of sex for different kinds of seasons, right. you know, and we talked about this some in the explicit conference that we did not that long <laughs> yeah. ago. You know, some couples I know literally schedule it, yeah. you know, and yeah, they're not, friends that do that. you know, they go, hey, on Wednesday night, that's our normal. Now, something could interrupt that. We don't, mm -hmm. you know, go crazy if that can't happen or whatever sure. and don't storm off into the night. You know, somebody's yeah. not feeling well. But in general, they and what that does is it alleviates a lot of pressure, especially yeah. for men, you know, yeah. to be able to go, OK, it's. I can it's count Tuesday. on it. I can count on it. <laughs> Wednesday's yeah. coming. I can take a cold shower and bite my fingernails a little bit longer. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And I, increasingly so, and I think you you and I have talked about this before, we're, we're also seeing the other side of the equation where women are complaining that their husbands are yes. withholding. And I think that might be worth talking about in the context of this question. Yeah. It creates know, some it, suspicion for me sometimes. It, it, it almost always mm. does for me. Um, I've had a, I've only had a handful of situations mm -hmm. where that's been the case. And mm -hmm. sometimes you see a woman whose sexual desire is pretty strong or stronger mm -hmm. than even her husband. But oftentimes what's happening is the guy is getting satisfaction through pornography. Mm -hmm. right. So my mind typically goes towards the pornography right. thing or, you know, she knows it hasn't been that long ago that he was able to perform and now he's not able to perform. And, mm -hmm. you know, she'll say, man, I've put on weight or I've, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the case. What is it? Yeah. Sure. She just doesn't, he doesn't seem attracted to me anymore. Mm -hmm. And come to find out he's not. Right. You know, so I think that's a thing that needs to be worked out with a third party mm -hmm. and let someone help you navigate that and, and, again, clarify expectations. But if there's not forgiveness or if there's not clear communication, it's never going to get worked out. And Satan's going to get in the middle of it and lead the people apart. Yeah. And then they're just roommates. They're just sleeping in right. the same bed. And unfortunately, that's fairly common. It's very common. Yeah. And then as couples get older, when... You know, a lot of the studies talk about how if there's a satisfied marriage, usually it's because there's a satisfied sexual relationship mm -hmm. between the two that grows over time. Again, as we've talked about, the quantity leads to quality. Mm -hmm. It's like most things you're involved mm -hmm. in, if you practice at it, you're going to get better and you're going to also know what your spouse likes mm -hmm. or even what they need from you sexually. Mm -hmm. And so those lines of communication open up. But for a lot of couples, they shut down too early. Yeah. And usually it's kids. Kids tend to come into yeah. the picture and... A lot changes, and I don't think there's any, there's not a parent out there that's not sympathetic to that that situation. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, we talked about that at, at the conference as well. I think it was in my sermon where I mentioned, like, there's studies about the first three years of marriage, you know, sex is very, very frequent. And around year four, it tends to take a nosedive. Well, what usually happens around year four is kids tend to show up on the scene. Absolutely. And, you know, they, they do have a way of interrupting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, everything and making you tired. And, you know, there's sure. all kinds of, you know, variables in play there. And so that's where it becomes important to communicate with each other. And that's where things like scheduling and babysitters mm -hmm. and, you know, all kinds of things. can Date nights. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's also a, a sense in which um, if there's a an, what seems to be an extraordinary level of distinction between one person's desire versus the other, that somebody may have a hormonal issue mm -hmm. going on. And so it's important to go see a doctor, get some blood work done and see what's going on there, either with him or with Both. her. Yeah. And I've seen that a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I think the other physiological thing tends to be, you know, for the for the woman, there are there are painful situations mm -hmm. for some women, yeah. and that's a really difficult mm -hmm. difficult thing for both people to navigate because she feels a high level of guilt, like, man, right. I would love to do this, but it just hurts, and right. then he's like, man, I need this, but she mm -hmm. can't, and so yeah. that can create tension, and that's yeah. where I think prayer comes in and, yeah. and asking God to continue to grow your heart for one another, mm -hmm. and that's really the heartbeat of this passage. It's really interesting that. You know, a lot of men would probably love to highlight one half of this and weaponize it against their wives, and that'd be precisely the wrong thing to do. You know, it says yeah. that you each have authority over each other's body, mm -hmm. you know. So that creates this servant mentality that goes, the last thing I would want to do would be to, you know, waylay you with the Bible and get you to yeah. submit and have sex with me. And the last thing I would want to do would be to withhold, you know, from from you because I'm just trying to be selfish. We each want to serve one another in the context of a marriage. So for the person who's asking this question, I would encourage them, do not just highlight that passage and go home and say, the Bible says, and then I heard John and Scott say, yeah. you know, you, you're, you're going to get punched upside the head and yeah. rightfully so. Yeah. Don't create a refrigerator magnet out of that verse and slap it over <laughs> for your wife to see if she goes and gets some Kool-Aid. You know, I, I think the other part of that is the context of Corinthians, which you think about, it's a hyper-sexualized mm -hmm. culture that he's writing yes. to that the church exists in, well, it's, it's pretty common to what we're seeing today. And so yeah. a lot of 
people bring really unrealistic expectations into yeah. marriage simply right. because they've had previous sexual liaisons uh-huh. and or they've watched a lot of pornography and that's not realistic either. Right. And so their their spouse, especially a wife, is like, man, what is this? This right. is not what I signed up for. And so I think that's where a lot of men need to be really careful mm-hmm. and probably honest about I'm not I'm not handling this important relationship in a, in a biblical way. Mm-hmm. And so to me, even more so because of who Paul's writing to, should we take heart to really be careful about how we're treating our spouse yeah. and making sure that we're not sexualizing them, that they're not objects. Because right. that would have been really easy to do in the Corinthian culture because they were having orgies and sleeping around with whoever they wanted to. And that's pretty much where we're at in our country too. Absolutely. And so men have a framed up view of sex that's not realistic. Mm-hmm. And a lot of women are walking naively into a relationship and you know, they're timid to begin with because it's already intimidating for them to be naked in front of a man. Mm. And then the guy's coming in there like a ravenous wolf and mm. it's it's not fair. Yeah, absolutely. If you're bringing pornographic expectations right. into a biblical marriage, you're, you're setting yourself up for right. all kinds of bitterness. Yeah. So the same person asked a question that's similar, um, but outside of the sexual realm, which says, what is the best way to divide responsibilities within a marriage? And he gives a kind of a qualifier, especially when the husband feels they're doing everything compared to their wife. So, so it's obvious, you know, with the person who's asking this question, it's probably reflective of many men. He's got deep frustration on a sexual level. And then at the same time, he's got deep frustration. Not only am I not getting to have <laughs> sex with you, but I'm doing all the work at the house. So yeah. he's probably a pretty frustrated fellow. Yeah. Yeah. In any confrontational conversation, I always say the same thing, and it's lead with a positive. Mm-hmm. You know, lead with grace, land with truth. So mm-hmm. you want to say to your wife, "Man, you do these things so well." Um, however, there are some things that are that are being neglected that mm-hmm. I can't continue to shoulder and keep up. It's just leading to resentment. Mm-hmm. I think you have to be honest because she's probably walking around assuming that you're good at these things yeah. and that you like doing these things. Yeah. And if you've not voiced to her. I mean, I need some help. Yeah. And again, as you said, those unmet or unvoiced expectations are almost always going to lead to some kind of frustration. Yeah, and you and I have both talked about this because we both have really high capacity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We're both getting ready to travel a little bit, and we literally wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for no, our pack wives. And do We'd end they... up in the desert somewhere That's on exactly accident. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we we tend to delegate around people's competencies in yes. our in our home. So yes. talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so in, in my marriage with Allison, she is really strong. And most things she, she does, she can do really well, and she can probably do most things better than me, to be totally candid with you. So we tend to delegate based on strengths. The thing I try to do is pick up a lot of the work that she really does not like doing because she does so many things and she doesn't mind doing so many things. I tend to focus on those tasks that she absolutely Mm -hmm. hates doing. And they seem small and petty, but there's a number of them around the house that I can do with ease. She hates, hates unloading the dishwasher. She hates taking out the trash, and she hates putting away laundry. She doesn't mind doing laundry, but for some reason, it it never makes it out of the laundry room. That's because we have two (laughs) kids, and she's got other things. So I'm the one that goes and picks everything up and puts stuff away. So those are small examples Mm -hmm. of, you know, these are... But we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. And I'll say from time to time, what do you need me to take off your plate? And I ask every morning, what do you need me to do for you today? That's the Mm -hmm. way I start my day with her. Inevitably, she'll have little things... Hey, on your way home from work, Mm -hmm. pick this up, do this. And there are certain seasons because she works too where I'm having to do quite a bit. Yeah. And so I can appreciate at times feeling like, man, I'm doing a lot. Um, But I also see she's contributing and she's stressed out and tired too. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I just try to find a balance in that. And then there are other times where, man, my workload here, you know, gets crazy or we get funerals and other stuff piled on top and she has to shoulder a lot at home. So it is a give and take. I think for me it's... Not keeping score. Mm-hmm. I remember counseling a young couple years ago where she would say, Man, he gets to go out X number of nights a week. I need to go out X number of nights a week. I'm like, Man, if you're you going to be miserable, you're going to yeah. be miserable if you keep score. So apologize quickly, forgive quickly. Those are two important things and, and move on. But different seasons are going to require each couple to maybe shoulder a little bit mm-hmm. more than the other. It's never going to be a 50 50 thing. Yeah. But if you're shouldering the majority of it and your spouse is just not delivering on most fronts, you need to talk about it. And then if she gets reactionary, you need to bring a third party in. Absolutely. Man, I can't say it any better than that. Well, good job. that's all I got. <laughs> well, hey, everybody, thanks for listening to Locker Room. Keep sending those questions in, and we will catch you next time. Thanks for being here. Yeah, glad to be here. 